Good health to all from Rexall. Hello, Rexall Drug Program. Gary Moore speaking. Hello, Gary. This is Jimmy. Jimmy Durante, where are you? I'm trying to get to the studio on time. I passed three red lights, went the wrong way up a one-way street... Drove over the sidewalk and did a solid 50 miles an hour down Sunset Boulevard. But, Jimmy, they can put you in jail for that. Where do you think I'm calling from? Yes, from Hollywood, it's the nose and the haircut. Jimmy Durante and Gary Moore with Suzanne Ellers, Roy Bargie and his orchestra, and yours truly, Howard Petrie. Brought to you by 10,000 Rexall drugstores who carry the complete line of top-quality Rexall drug products. Ladies and gentlemen, next Thursday is Thanksgiving. A holiday started by the pilgrims who gave thanks when they landed on Plymouth Rock. But now we bring you a young man who would give thanks if he could just land in old Plymouth. And here he is, Gary Moore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, my friends, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. May I wish you a very happy November the 22th. And, And before we do anything else tonight, we're going to hold the grand drawing for our annual turkey raffle. Now, of course, we all understand that if the person with the winning number is not in the audience tonight, the turkey automatically becomes mine. <laughs> now, I draw the number out of the hat, and it is number 64709. 64709! I got it, I got it! 64709! Ah! <laughs> well, better luck next year. Now, getting on with the program here, I would... Oh, excuse me. Uh, hello? Say, Mr. Moore, it is true, isn't it, that on Thanksgiving Day, people eat turkey? Why, of course. I told you you had it wrong, you crazy turkey. Let go of my leg! <laughs> no. You know how they're going to have that telephone taken out of here? Last night, I got a call at 3 o'clock in the morning, and a voice said, Pardon me, what radio program are you listening to? I said, radio program? I'm sound asleep. She said, oh, the Durante Moore show, eh? (laughs) Personally, I considered that very, very rude. I did. Well, Gary, it seems to me that nobody is as courteous nowadays as they used to be. What? Why, Suzanne Ellers. Bless your little Emily Post. (laughs) And I I agree with you, too, Suzanne. You know, in the old days, if a gentleman was walking along with a lady and they came to a mud puddle, right away he'd take off the coat and spread it over the puddle. And after the lady walked across, she'd say, Thank you, Herman, but next time, let's use your coat. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Gary, why mm-hmm. don't you give the folks a few pointers on etiquette? Well, let's take what we were just talking about here, walking on the sidewalk. Now, when walking to a football game, the gentleman always walks two and a half paces behind his mother-in-law. Well, why two and a half paces? In football, that's the regulation distance for a place kick. <laughs> And you know, Suzanne, ladies, ladies can be pretty rude sometimes, too. Especially when they keep people waiting on streetcars while they rummage through their purses. Well, don't look at me, Gary. My purse is never crowded. It is, man. Let me peek into your purse here for a minute. Hmm, now. A bag of marbles. An electric toaster. <laughs> your boyfriend's picture. Your boyfriend. <laughs> and my, my goodness, Suzanne, what is this? <laughs> Gee whiz. You know, those helicopters can take off from any place, can't they? Hey, oh, maybe etiquette isn't too necessary anyway. But besides, here's the guy who proves my point. Jimmy Durante. In person. You've got a scout off each day with a song. Now even when things go wrong, you'll feel better and you'll even look better. I'm here to stop the music, stop the music. My orchestration calls for a cowbell, not a cow. <laughs> now for my second number, I'll sing. Mammy, mammy, the sun shines east, the sun shines west. <laughs> California's sunshine. <laughs> the only sunshine in the world guaranteed to shrink a shirt. <laughs> Stars, you are in fine voice tonight. Thank you, Junior. And that was only on one tonsil, which I inherited from my pater. Your your pater? Yeah, you know, my brother. <laughs> oh, your, your brother. Who did you think he was, my old man? <laughs> but that is neither sand, burr, nor dew. <laughs> he 
your edification, Junior. I just got back from Washington where I spent two days in secret session with the president. Ooh, a crisis? Yes, a critical crisis. We called in the Secretary of the Navy, the Secretary of War, the Army engineers, and the greatest scientific minds in the country, but it was no use. Even they couldn't figure out how to stop the leak in my swimming pool. <laughs> Why, they poured more concrete in my pool than they got in Boulder Dodge. James, James, you mean, you mean Boulder Dam. Watch your language, Mr. Moore. <laughs> After all, this program is being shortwave to pickets. <laughs> Is that why you went down to Washington to discuss your swimming pool? Well, not exactly. Mr. Truman had a few problems of his own. Oh. When I arrived, he was putting an oil burner in the basement, a wood burner in the kitchen, an electric heater in the bedroom, and a gas heater in the bathroom. Well, what's the idea of all that? Harry is going to be warm this winter no matter what John L. Lewis does. <laughs> but you know, I wasn't... But you know, I wasn't, I wasn't in Washington over five minutes when the president created a new cabinet post for me. He appointed me minister without portfolio. Minister without portfolio? Yeah, how do you like that? A big country like this and they can't even afford to buy me a briefcase. <laughs> an, in, an important man like me has to carry his lunch in his back pocket. Well, Snodds, I suppose as minister without portfolio, you have to handle some of the government's crucial problems. That's right. For instance, last week the president of the Fruit Growers Association complained to me that the climate of California is no good for growing bananas. He said that the climate of California is no good for growing bananas? Yeah. How could the guy look me in the face and say that? <laughs> what does he think this is, holding up my glasses, a kumquat? <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll take it, Jim. Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah he's here. Who is it, please? Oh, oh, my goodness. Just a moment, Your Worship. Jimmy, the Duke of Windsor wishes to speak to you. Does it sound like a touch? <laughs> Never mind if it is. He is good for us. Uh, give me the phone. Hello, Duke. I got everything arranged for your trip to Hollywood with the Duchess. What? Living quarters? Don't worry about it. I got you the bridal suite. That's right at the Pismo Beach Motel. <laughs> is it a good place? Are you kidding? You get a towel each. <laughs> now tell me your plans. What do you and the Duchess want to do when you get here? What? Oh, no. We have too many of those husband and wife programs already. <laughs> What's that? Pip, pip, cheerio. Thank you, and the Yorkshire pudding to you, too. <laughs> Jimmy, you're, arra you're arranging the Hollywood trip for the Duke and Duchess of Windsor? A logical choice, after all, Junior. On my last trip to England, you know, the continent. Yes. I mingled with all kinds of royalty. Counts and their countesses, dukes and their duchesses, and make kiosses and their moccasins. <laughs> No, no, Jim, not, not moccasins. Well, what is the right word? Uh, marchioness. You see, uh, le consort du marquis est une marchioness. C'est la forme subjonctive, passe participe, de la verbe plus perfect, et dans tous les mondes, c'est statistique et bien connu. How do you like that? Ask a guy a question and he joins the foreign legion. <laughs> Tell me, Gary, where do you pick up these fascinating bits of useless trivia? <laughs> In the Encyclopedia Britannica, Jimmy. It's a wonderful book. Haven't you ever read it? No. I'm waiting for them to make a picture out of it. <laughs> but, Junior? <laughs> I got a million of them. <laughs> but, Junior, where do you see the banquet I'm planning for the Duke and Duchess? Fifteen pheasants, twenty-five venisons, thirty grouse, fifty grouse, and a gross of grease. <laughs> grease is the feminine of grouse. <laughs> Following that, a mongoose on the half shell, and as my piece de resistance, curry of Tootsie Roll. <laughs> but there's one thing that worries me about the banquet, Junior. What do you do with the olive pits? Do you swallow them or do you hold them in your mouth until you get home? <laughs> Jim, there's only one thing to do with olive pits. You take them in your hand, and when no one is looking, you quietly sneak them into the cuff of your trousers. But suppose it's a formal affair and I'm wearing knickers. <laughs> Wait a minute, Junior. I've got it. I know what I'll do. I'll hold the olive pits in my right hand, and when the Duke shakes hands with me to say good night, yes, I let go. Oh, wait a minute, Jim. Are you sure you're the right man for this job? Don't worry about me, Junior. Why, I've mingled with nobility all my life. The last time I was in England, the king wanted to make me knight of the garter, and the queen wanted to make me knight of the bath. Naturally, I refused. 
Jimmy, the king wanted to make you knight of the garter, and the queen wanted to make you knight of the bath, and you refused? Yeah. I didn't mind putting on his garter, but a guy's got to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> now you know that you can't go wrong. Why do you feel powerful Always be sure it's Durani and more when you hear a tremendous ovation. And that applause means it's time to pause for Rexall identification. Rexall is the name of a complete line of top quality drug products. Yes, Rexall is the name of a complete line of fine drug products sold exclusively in your Rexall drug stores. There is a Rexall drug product for every health need. For aspirin, take Rexall. For vitamins, take Rexall. For a mouthwash, Take Rexall. Learn to insist upon Rexall for reliability. The name Rexall is your constant guarantee of safe, sure, pure drug products. The finest that science and pharmaceutical skill can produce. So, remember... To be safe, to be sure that the product is pure when you're buying a drug preparation. Take the clerk to test, step right up and ask for Rexall identification. Good health to all from Rexall. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Howard Petrie, a man whom we've ever... I've what? got... Don't laugh, don't laugh. <laughs> Remember, I'm reading from a carbon copy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was Howard Petrie, a man of whom we're very proud because of his famous uncle. We all know that Thomas Edison invented the electric light, but Mr. Petrie's uncle is the one who showed him how to turn it off. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jimmy. Can you prove that? I sure can. Here's a picture of him right in front of the town tavern. And he's out like a light. <laughs> well, I've never been one to look down my nose at other people's inventions, Jim, but I should just like to call attention to one of my own ancestors, Casanova Moore, a man who invented a device that has since become the very backbone of our social civilization. It was my great, 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 great grandfather who first invented the kiss. <laughs> No sense in your hanging around, madam. My uncle's been dead 200 years. <laughs> so what? No man is perfect. <laughs> so your uncle invented a kiss, eh, Junior? Yes, he did. Well, tell us about it. Meanwhile, I shall bury my head in the razor's edge and listen with a sharp mind. <laughs> Well, friends, my uncle, Casanova Moore, was born in England in the year 1525. And up till that time, the kiss had never been thought of. In order to show their love in those days, couples engaged in a form of affection called dipple dipling. Now, now to dipple dipe, a man put his arm around his girl, gently stroked her lovely hair, looked tenderly into her eyes, and slapped her in the face with a wet herring. <laughs> yes, every night my uncle's sweetheart would raise her little face to his and say... Casanova, before you leave me, give me just one more dipple dive. Very well, my dearest. Oh, Casanova, the boneless kind! <laughs> but somehow, so, somehow the more Casanova dipple dived, the less it seemed like the fulfillment of love's young dream. So then and there, he determined to invent some new kind of embrace. And his first invention he called... Schmooze crofting. Now, in, in schmooze crofting, the boy would cover his girl's face with brushless shaving cream and blow bits of confetti at her. But this was no good. Every evening, she would end up with her face looking like the floor of the Brown Derby on New Year's Eve. Then he tried another idea, and this he called... Twack noodling. Now, twack noodling... Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Twack noodling, twack noodling was really the most daring idea of them all. The boy and girl would sit on the Davenport, turn out the lights, and then whisper into each other's ears, Artie Shaw. <laughs> but the world, the world wasn't ready for Uncle Casanova's inventions, so to keep body and soul together, he took a temporary job in a local factory as a pickle taster. And after tasting pickles for three years, one day he turned to the girl at the next bench and said, Come here a minute, Mabel. <laughs> What is it, Casanova? There's only one tipple left, and I want to get home to my experiments. Let's taste this last one together. All right. You start at one end, and I'll start at the other. Little did Casanova suspect that his lifelong ambition was about to be realized. Faster and faster, they ate towards the center of the pickle. <laughs> <laughs> their lips... Their lips 
just came closer and closer until finally Casanova bit past his half and... <laughs> Climbing down from the chandelier... <laughs> Casanova knew that this was what he'd been looking for. He had invented the kiss. So bounding out of the pickle factory, he dashed down the street, kissing every girl he met up with. Yeah, are you sure you got the right party? <laughs> realizing, realizing that he was wasting his time with the little man, he decided to take his idea to the top. So he called on the King of England, Henry VIII. Confronting him, he said, Your Majesty, you don't look well. What's the trouble? I'm feeling mighty low. <laughs> here, here was Casanova's chance. Quickly, he said, Your Majesty, I have invented a thing called the kiss. Try it once on Anne Boleyn and see what it does to you. So Henry grabbed Anne Boleyn, puckered up, and... Well, King Henry, how do you feel now? Give me five minutes more. Only five minutes more. <laughs> and so with King Henry VIII's endorsement, the kiss took its rightful place in the English way of living. And I am proud to say that I have inherited my uncle's proficiency in the art. But just the other day, as I was walking down the street, a man looked at me, and I distinctly heard him say, Boy, get a load of that kisser. Thank you, Mr. Moore, for that erudite discussion of osculation. And now, ladies and gentlemen, going from the carbon copy to the one in bold type, <laughs> our charming chantu, Suzanne Ellis, a little lady with pipes of solid gold. I should know I got a plumber's cart. How are you, Susie? How are you, Jimmy? And thank you for that lovely introduction. But when it comes to singing, I bow to the master. <laughs> How do you get those mellow tones in your voice? That's a Durani secret, Susie, but I'll let you in on it. Every morning, I swab my throat with a concoction. Consisting of two parts cayenne pepper, a jigger of creosote, a dash of chemtune, and a pound and a half of grated garlic. And does that make you sing? After that, you gotta sing. If you don't open your mouth, you suffocate. <laughs> sing, Susie, sing. For you, for me, forevermore. It's bound to be. It's plain to see We found by finding each other The love we waited for I'm yours, you're mine And in our hearts The It's good health to all from Rexall. Listen. 
for goodness sake when you've a tummy ache. Oh, 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 oh. Deep in your solar plexus, you really should find out how good ho, 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 ho. this Rexol Bismarck is. B-I-S-M-A-R-E-X, Rexol Bismarck. That's right, friends. An acid stomach condition by any other name can feel just as uncomfortable. And whether you call it indigestion, dyspepsia, or heartburn, you'll find the prompt relief you need as well as the prolonged relief you want with Rexall Bismarex. Because Rexall Bismarex contains not one, but four laboratory-approved alkalizing antacids. One fast-acting alkalizer and three slow-acting alkalizers. That's why Rexall Bismarex not only relieves your discomfort promptly but continues the acid-neutralizing effect for a prolonged period. Just mix one or two teaspoonfuls in a glass of water and drink. It's a pure peppermint pleasure. Remember, only a Rexall drugstore can sell you... B-I-S-M-A-R-E-X Rexall B-I-S-M-A-R-E-X And now, ladies and gentlemen, in accordance with time-honored custom, we present our special Thanksgiving opera as performed by that magnificent vocal group, the Durante and Moore G-Clef Coffee Clatch and Culture Choir. In this opera, ladies and gentlemen, I sing for two consecutive hours without taking a breath. Oh, now, wait. How can you sing for two hours without taking a breath? Storage tank in my nose. <laughs> well, in any event, in this Thanksgiving opera, friends, Mr. Durante will appear as Miles Standish, and I shall play the part... Of John Alden. Ah, yes. He was the fellow who made all the speeches and ended up with nothing. That's right. Sort of an early-day Democrat. Yes, yes. <laughs> now, the, the part of the Republicans in... Now, the part of the lovely Priscilla will be played by our gal, Suzanne Ellers, and the special choral effects, as always, will be sung by our announcer, Mr. Howard Petrie. Oh, James Melton would just hate me for this. <laughs> It's amazing the thing the rain washes down from the mountains. <laughs> Quiet, James. Maestro Boggy, overture for the opera. <laughs> Our opera tonight deals with one of the greatest love stories ever told. The story of Captain Miles Standish, John Alden, and the lovely Priscilla. It's a peaceful day in the Pilgrim Village, but in the hearts of these three people, a fateful storm is brewing. I'm the captain, and my name is Standish. My manners are good, but my face is outlandish. But in spite of my appearance, I'm a mighty big fella. You can tell he's important by the size of his smeller. That's me. That's him. That's me. That's him. And I'm John Alden. I'm Standish's pal. I'm the romantic target of every pilgrim gal. You can tell by my face, I'm an early day Sinatra. Except for his hair cutting, that ain't so hot for Tis too. Tis not. Tis too. Tis not. And I am the heroine. My name is Priscilla. You can tell by my figure, I'm a real killer diller. I just passed 21, and that is a fact. Just passed 21? She must have passed it coming back. Did do. Did not. Hot ta. Hot ta. Hot ta. Hot ta. Listen, John Alderson, Sean, my pal, I'll tell you right now, I'm in love with that gal. Her skin is like a peach, John, that you can bet. Yes, just like a peach, sort of fuzzy and wet. It is now. It is too. Yes, now. It is too. I love the gal. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm leaving the proposing up to you. You're leaving it to me. Well, aren't you taking a chance? You double-cross me, but they'll have to take you to the nearest hospital and operate 40 times and remove the lead from your pants. Oh, oh. Get her gone. Oh, oh. Get her gone. Hot job. Hot job, hot job, hot job. Now, now there's an intelligent comment. And so we find John Alden Moore in Priscilla's living room as Miles Standish Durante listens through an open window. Oh, Priscilla, Priscilla, my pretty little dove I've come to your cabin for to speak of love Now I know that you're bashful and you're shy by a heck Who's bashful, bud? Come on, let's mix Wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you doing? He's getting hot and I'm standing here stewing Oh, speak for yourself, John, don't be dull If he speaks for himself, I'll fracture his skull Now wait Come on, John Now wait Come on, John Oh, Priscilla, Priscilla, my shy little elf I'm a-speaking of love, yeah, but not for myself Captain Miles Standish is the man for you. Captain Standish? How do you do? Madam, madam, I'm making my plea. I'm getting right down on my bended knee. I've got a soft feeling that's making me mellow. Oh, get up, Miles. You're kneeling in her jello. Hot cha, hot cha, hot cha, hot cha. <laughs> 
There must be some place he could go to be alone. <laughs> now tell us, Priscilla, what's your decision? Would you rather be mine or would you rather be his? I'm as strong as the wizard from the land of Oz. Yeah, but most of your strength has gone to your schnoz. Has not. Has to. Has not. Has, has to. On the other hand, Prissy, if you want to be shrewd, you'll marry with me, because I'm a Hollywood dude. I wear perfume, just like Hetty or Veronica. It smells like low tide at Santa Monica. Just not. Just not. Just do. Hot chop. Hot chop. Hot chop. Hot chop. I'll bet he has fun just tying his laces. Well, tell you, boys, I love you like a mother, but I've already given my heart to another. You're in love with another? Who can it be? Don't be silly. She's marrying me. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. She's marrying you. Can that be a fact? Everybody wants to get into the act. But you're not good looking, and you've got no dough. What did you say that made her love you so? I said, hot shot! Hot shot! Hot shot! Hot shot! Him and his big fat education. <laughs> Petrie again with those four most Rexall reminders for the week. Remember, Rexall Bismarex. Remember, Rexall is the complete line of top quality drug products for every health need. Remember, Rexall drugs are sold only in a Rexall drugstore. Remember, Rexall for reliability. That familiar oval sign, R-E-X-A-L-L, is the surest sign of top quality in drugs and drugstores. Touche, Professor Peepy, and I'd like to add, I do my shopping at a Rexall store, what I want they got, and I pull them all. Hombre, I'll go, he prefers them to, we buy Rexall, that's all. How do you do? And note of finality, Mr. Durant. Note of conclusion, Mr. Moore. Yeah, Jim, I guess that just about wraps up the tinfoil on tonight's little package. Say, would you uh, care to join me at Ciro's now in a little game of fumbling for the check? No, thanks, Junior. I've met my master. <laughs> but if it's a little snack you want, come over to my house. Why, it's common gossip that I brew the best coffee in Beverly Hills. You do, huh? Oh, yes. I use only the tender sec- center section of the bean. Really? Let me tell you the secret of coffee making, Junior. You know where the percolator starts to go plop, 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 plop? Mm-hmm. Well, if you open the top at that point... Yes? You get it right in the eye. <laughs> Good night, Mr. Reddy. Good night, Mr. Moore. Good night, everybody. Good night, Mrs. Caliban. Good night. Well, Rex's all for tonight, folks. So goodbye now for Suzanne Ellers, Roy Barge and his orchestra, yours truly, Howard Petrie. And Jimmy Durante. And Gary Moore in person. So until next Friday, same time, same Columbia station, good health to all from Rexall. This program is produced and directed by Phil Cohan. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. And this is WCBS, New York.